What's up guys? Jason and Jack Bab here. Not a lot of car stuff going on at the moment, but uh, I'm running some LFX intake manifold spacers over here on the ADX. It's got a drill for about a half hour, so I've got a little bit of time to kill while it's kind of quiet. I apologize for the drill sounds, but I figured I would uh, make a quick video and show you guys this new toy. It's a Thunder Laser, Nova 51, 100 watt CO2 laser. So uh, we got it uh, back in December, and it's now the beginning of March, so we've been playing with it for a while. Um, but anyway, I'll uh, walk you around it real quick. We'll cut some little trinket, and we'll talk about how it's been so far, just in case you find yourself in the market for a thunder laser. So this here is the water chiller. It's a CW5000. It came with it. Uh, you can see here it's got a fairly large work envelope. Off the top of my head I think it's about 36 by 51. And let's see. There's the uh, exhaust fan that extracts the fumes and comes up here and out the wall. We've currently got it hooked up to this small pancake air compressor. It came with a small compressor that it worked, but it wasn't great. And uh, we noticed that once we gave it some actual air pressure, the cutting performance uh, greatly was increased much better. So if you do get one of these, um, I highly recommend either rigging it up to a small compressor like that, or if you have shop air, plumb it into your shop air line. Um, we're gonna plumb it into the shop air at some point, but this got us going and, you know, it basically told us that this is what you need to do. So, yeah, uh, anyway, that's it. So let's throw some wood in there and then uh, we'll cut something. So, they say you want to be at about six millimeters for your focus height. And this thing just happens to be six millimeters. So, we'll go ahead and uh, I guess I'll just leave that there and cut. Yeah, just a real small, useless trinket. Awesome, huh? So that's the laser, uh, you know, short, sweet video. Um, so I can say, uh, I don't know, I guess I can give you a, kind of a review. Um, <clears throat> when we got it, we had some issues with it. Uh, you know, we were struggling to get it to cut and struggling to get the speeds they say it could run at. Um, it had a problem with the controller that was causing the Y-axis to lock up 
and the only way to get it to work again was to turn the machine off and then back on. So <clears throat> uh, I can say that the tech support people at Thunder Laser were super helpful. Um, we had no problems getting parts. Um, you know, when the problem started happening, uh, they had us swap the drivers for the servos to see if it would go uh, from the Y to the X to see if it was a driver problem. Uh, it was not a driver problem, so they sent us another servo motor. I replaced the servo motor. Problem still persisted. And finally, they figured, well, it must be the controller. They sent us another controller. Um, and, you know, every time we needed something, it always came pretty quickly. It's not like we were waiting for it to come on the slow boat over the seas. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, uh, you know, within a few days or a week tops, uh, we always had whatever the next part was they wanted us to try. So once I finally replaced the controller, um, it started working pretty good, and I haven't had any uh, issues as far as uh, with the Y-axis locking up or any movement problems uh, since the controller has been replaced. So that's good. Uh, so like I say, um, Brian and Clay at Thunder Laser, the tech support was excellent and no problems getting parts. So we're finally up and running. Um, the main thing that we're using it for at the moment is the packaging foam for say the Laminator FX. Uh, I don't think I have any here, do I? No. Anyway, here's a piece of foam that we actually paid someone else to do. Oh, here we go, laminator. So, these aren't put together yet, but essentially, um, I take a sheet of foam and I cut all these pieces, do the logo on the top, and then uh, glue them all together. And they go in this nice little box here, bang, 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 boom. So that's uh, that's been the main use that I've had for it so far. Um, you know, when we did uh, the packaging foam for the BNR valve, formerly known as the Boostolator, uh, I actually paid someone to do this, and it's made like on a die, like a it just some some die was made, and it just punches these things out. Um, so anyway. On the laminator, we just went straight to the laser and we're cutting it on that. That way, we didn't have to buy, you know, eight hundred dollars for a die to be made, plus like five hundred pieces of foam that sit around until someone buys something. With the laser, I can just cut the stuff as I need to, so it's nice. And uh, you know, cost-wise, you know, if you take out this eight hundred dollars for the die on this one cost is about the same versus for running it on the laser versus having someone else make it, but you don't have to buy 500 or have a die made. So anyway, uh, if you guys got any brilliant ideas on uh, some kind of products or things that you'd like to see that we could feasibly do with the laser, uh, feel free to comment below. We you know, haven't found a lot of uses for it as far as products and things go, but I mean, for the packaging foam, it's nice. And, you know, we can do engravings on wood, glass, uh, plexiglass, stuff like that. So there might be some like lighted something or etched something that you guys might want for your Camaro or for whatever, but anyway, I haven't put a whole lot of thought into it so far, but we've got it. We've been doing a lot of artsy things with it and whatnot, so. And really that's it so <clears throat> uh, if i ever do uh, maybe the next time i actually do the packaging phone I'll, I'll make a video on that it's kind of neat to watch as far as stuff and things go we're just kind of doing business as usual haven't come up with any new things yet um, got ideas but i'm just kind of lacking motivation at the moment so Hopefully uh, I'll get motivated and something will happen, I don't know. Uh, we've started looking into the new 2.7 engine that's in the Silverado and it's gonna be in the CT4V, I think. 
but a uh, 2.7 liter four cylinder. Um, actually tried to get a whole engine and transmission and uh, I just couldn't come uh, eye to eye with what the seller wanted and what I wanted to pay. So at some point we may end up with one. I've, there's, I've only seen one for sale. So um, there's more pop up, maybe I can get one and we'll do something with it. I don't know what. Um, I've got an electric water pump off that Silverado 2.7 engine coming that I'm going to play with. Hopefully something cool will come out of that, but in the meantime, here's the uh, turbo gasket. Three holer. Interesting, eh? So uh, yeah, we're also trying to get our hands on a turbo. So let us know what we can do with that laser. And yeah, I'll try and get back on making more videos. And <clears throat> So anyway, that's it for today. Short video. A little bit about the laser, a little bit about 2.7 talk, but uh, anyway, that's all I got. So, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I'll try and uh, get back on the video bandwagon and make some more videos. Hopefully, they're cooler than this one, but anyway, that's all I got for now. So, thanks for watching.